Okay, welcome from my side. So thank you to have the opportunity to be back here in Belgrade. I always appreciate it very much. Um, and thank you for the warm uh, hospitality we always facing here in Belgrade. It's really great. And thank you for the chance again. So before we thought how we make it today, uh, we had uh, some ideas how maybe we can bring it on in a way that it's more uh, easygoing and more that you get more uh, even, I would say, emotional insights of what community is or what community can be. And so we decided to show you a short movie after an in introduction on my side and that you can get some aspects how Okta is working. We produced actually this uh, movie about two years ago. It three years ago, three year, almost three years. Almost three years ago, it was uh, at the anniversary of Octo. It was the tenth anniversary, so we are 13 years at the moment. And I want to give you short, some short uh, aspects of how community working is. That, uh, community media are defined and how they are working. So, uh, who, any one of you, who? thought uh, about community media, who had read about it or have an idea about it. It's just to help me to get an idea where I have to start. So I should start from the very beginning, I guess. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, actually, uh, from a, a scientific point of view, it's really hard and not so easy to define it. Yeah? There are a lot of scientists who tried to classify or to de define community media, but most of, of them failed. Because there are so many different <laughs> concepts and models of community media, that's almost not possible to classify them in a scientific way. Yeah? And uh, it's also an aspect of community media. There are existing quite all over the world, in a way, but in every uh, country and in every city, it's different. It's a different model because it's a very flexible way of making media which fits very much to the environment of a specific place on this world. Yeah? So it's very hard to define, but I would say there are about three or four aspects which more or less uh, defines community media and uh, at least one or two of them are a part of a concept of a community media all over the world. And what's important, because I'm always forgetting when I'm talking to people about this topic, is when I'm talking about community media, I mean television and radio. So the electronic form of community media. There are also some concepts and uh, organization which do, uh, does newspapers, for example, uh, it's not my issue, so I'm not really an expert, I know a little bit about it, but it's not uh, my core competence. I'm talking about television and radio. So in a way, what, uh, what is, it's a kind of, I would say, uh, four aspects with, which are more or less in every community media. The one is that community media are participatory. This means that not only journalists and professionals are working there and are in the charge for producing the content. Community media always tries to get people from the street, common people or people uh, coming out from different communities uh, or students in the way of uh, uh, campus television and radio. We got it also very much in the United States of America to empower them to produce their own content and their own program. And this is more or less one of the most uh, important aspects of uh, community media, that it's not only made by journalists. Yeah? And this is, I would say, it's working all over the world in the way. Another aspect uh, which also are facing not everywhere, but a lot of them, is to be non-commercial. In the way that most of the organization, organizations who carry community television or radio are not for profit, are not for profit uh, organization who tries to maximize their income, it's just more or less uh, a social profit organization who tries to work for the society. Yeah, that's also a very important aspect. It's not working everywhere because we know, for example, in South America, there are a lot of concepts where we got commercial community media. It's a little bit a different approach, 
but I would say uh, in North America and uh, in Europe very much and also in Asia, most of them are working as non-profit organization. Um, another uh, aspect uh, I would say is that a lot of them tries to make a complementary program. So uh, the goal is uh, to when you look to more or less mainstream programs made by state-owned uh, public, more or less public service broadcast systems or very much the private commercial that there is left a broad range of topics which are not uh, are covered by them. And um, from the most uh, uh, community media it's their goal and their aim to put on these specific topics which are left by the mainstream programs. This means contemporary arts, this means uh, uh, ethnic communities and minorities and so on. That's also the reason that many, many uh, community media are broadcasting in many different languages, yeah? which you will never will find in a uh, mainstream program because it doesn't fit uh, to the aim of uh, earning money from advertising. So it's also very specific for, for community media. Uh, and that's uh, more or less uh, the, the three most important aspects of me uh, community media. And uh, w when I said it's very hard from a scientific point of view to define community media, there is one fact uh, which is really uh, evidence-based and proven uh, by, by the scientific community. It's the fact that uh, the model of community radio, I would say, it's the very, very oldest kind and form of radio and of electronic media. Because especially, for example, in the early 20s in the United States of America, when it was the very first days of radio, about 100% of all radios was driven as community radios. So having advertisers on uh, radio programs and making money with the uh, ownership of our radios started quite late 10, 15 years later. So um, it started with the, 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 I would say, the root form or the form that the very first form of radio was community medium. And most of them were uh, non-commercial. So in a way, social profit radios. So uh, yes, from these three aspects I mentioned, I, I forgot one, it's the fourth. It, that a lot of this community uh, uh, radio and televisions are working more or less in the educational issues. That's the reason that they are very, sometimes they are very close to universities and high schools working together with students because very often they are also in, in, in charge to work together for educational re reasons that, for example, students have the possibility to train and to practice on producing content for radio and television. So this is also a very, very important aspect. And uh, students are one of the main uh, communities who are working communities all over the world. So this is another fact. And uh, the many, many, many community radios who start in the 20s in the United States, many were very close situated to university. So they have, uh, in a way, both directions, uh, two levels. On the one, to be community media, this means bringing in people from the street, normal people, common people, give them the chance uh, to talk about their communities and their issues. And on the other side, a lot of students who run uh, these stations and have the possibility the, there to train uh, every aspect of running a medium. This means uh, beginning by organization, administration issues, uh, producing programs and so on. Making marketing, which is very important, of <coughs> course, obviously for running media. So this was, was the early days. And uh, it started, it was a funny aspect that the industry who built the radio, uh, 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 some, uh, Receiver. the receivers, yeah, that they recognized that their uh, product, which they are selling on the market to the people, uh, can be a good way to make advertising for the product itself. And this was the early start of advertising on radio. And then it was quite a short step and a really 
very uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, evolution that it got more or less a commercial medium. Yeah? But never forget that it started as a non-commercial medium, which is very important. So another fact is that there was in the beginning in the States uh, not a huge construction of uh, theoretical frameworks and so on. It was just made by the people and by the techniques who invented the possibility of uh, using radiation and transmission for uh, delivery content to the people. So no really scientists are thought about all the possibilities. So it started very, very late that uh, the scientific community started to work on this issue, what media or community media in specific can be for the people. Yeah? And I think I'm going to get back to this uh, issue later because uh, I think this can be a good uh, point that you get an insight of one community television. It's Octo, it's based in Vienna uh, now for 13 years. And it's got some special features which uh, uh, makes a difference to the, for example, to the models and uh, the concepts of community media in Germany, for example. And uh, I can talk about this later on, but I think now it's the right <coughs> point. So it's about 25 minutes, just to know. And after that, you can... <coughs> Uh, ask questions or you have to add, ask yeah, questions. Have to ask questions. <laughs> I like it more interactive, yeah. but I have, because I'm not a teacher, I'm not a professor, so I like to talk to people, but not only in front to them. So I don't know if, if it's probably better. Is there to, already to a put question? The light, uh, out, oh. so, yeah. Maybe everything clear. Okay, <laughs> that's best. <laughs> Ein Wiener Format ist das? Wo ethnische Minderheiten drucken, Sendungen haben, Latino TV zum Beispiel, Afrika TV, alles Mögliche. Ich finde besonders cool eigentlich, dass jeder und jede die Möglichkeit hat, was zu machen. Okay, das war die andere Seite, so more, more, more real life, <laughs> how Okto is working. So as one example of the community television, so we are almost one, more or less one of the bigger one in the German speaking region, uh, together with uh, Alex in Berlin and with Tiet in Hamburg, so it's two German and the one in Austria, Vienna, so we are the three biggest, thankful because of the financiation and for the many, many people who are interested in working voluntarily, because most of uh, the producers are working voluntarily at Octo, and uh, it's always for us great to have them, otherwise we wouldn't have any program, so it's very important. So they spend, I would say, about around 80% of the whole program of Octo, the rest are made by professionals like Senat and the crew, the staff of Octo, and some <coughs> programs we are exchanging uh, international. So very easy for us, uh, uh, obviously, is uh, with uh, Germany because of the language, but we got also program exchange even with China or with uh, in Sarajevo we got uh, with TVSA, and 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 so it's it, it's very different. But. Uh also important, uh, we, we cooperate with universities and faculties in Austria, so they can uh, um, uh, broadcast their own program, like you also guys do here, so you produce some uh, stories uh, in different courses, so, but we have the possibility to broadcast also this uh, program, and this is... Uh, a very important uh, aspect, aspect of, of our television. Yeah. So, I can very short, very briefly uh, continue with the history because I started very much with the situation uh, in the United States in the early 20th century and we found a totally different situation here in Europe because the Europe uh, media or broadcast history is very much made and around about uh, public broadcasters. So it means state-owned, more or less public service broadcast systems, and it's totally different to the situation in the United States. So it took until the 80s 
were first kinds and concepts of community media, of partic participatory community media started in Europe. So in this case, uh, for example, Germany was very important, also France. And as you probably know, we have been the very last country in Austria which had a liberalization on uh, broadcast media. So this means we had until the late 90s, 1990s, just uh, the state-owned ORF. And so we got uh, the privilege of a late birth and uh, brings us in the situation that we can make, make a lot of uh, proving concepts in other countries and try to find the best aspects uh, for uh, establishing OCTO. Uh, as it's not a big, uh, I would say, surprise that in Germany they found their uh, scenery with a very, very <coughs> deep theoretical framework because they're coming out from the uh, Frankfurter Schule, uh, uh, the Kritische Theorie, Horkheim, Adorno, so they got a very, very scientific approach and a theoretical approach by establishing their so-called open channels, offene Kanäle, and uh, it's, uh, as it was in the 80s, in the early 80s, it's very different to the situation in Austria. So we saw many things which are in our aspect, it's just our view on things, uh, which uh, doesn't work so good in Germany. So for example, there was a rule, it was a golden rule, it was uh, the first take, uh, first serve principle. This means they played all the program, all the shows, uh, following after the strategy how they get it into their house. So it made a very chaotic mixture of different uh, program elements which you can't follow uh, on the other side when you want to, to, to see or listen to it. Yeah? And that was the reason that we said uh, by the establishing of Octo we wanted to do it in a different way and uh, we uh, established a kind of a strategic program planning that we are looking what are the slots in the schedule which can be fit to special target group uh, the most and the best and so we tried also not only to serve the many different minority uh, uh, topics, uh, but also to get uh, uh, as much audience as possible for our very specific program, program because we say there is so much uh, voluntarily made program that it's our duty as the staff who get paid for their job to make an audience as big as possible for these people that they, have, they, they see uh, 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 the, the success of their work and not to send it somewhere, I don't know, <laughs> somewhere else. And so we have, uh, a, I would say, a good working uh, marketing also. We, um, we support our shows and programs which are made voluntarily uh, with uh, press, uh, press work and so on. And we try to make marketing on the different channels. To, for, for our voluntary producers that they got an uh, audience as, as big as possible. So this is a very important aim, which is totally different uh, to the situation in Germany because they are not really allowed. And they are really close, uh, organized by the uh, agencies. Uh, so this means, uh, I would say, the re regulatory authorities. So they are working very much in a very official way. Yeah. And so we said we want to make it more, more sexy. And that was also the reason that uh, we also saw uh, that uh, in the very beginning it was more or less a pity to me as the managing director that we had to work in the same legal framework like the private commercial. And there was a long, I would say, uh, media, political, policy, fight from my side and from my colleagues to fight for a own legal framework like the colleagues in Germany got, but uh, we failed and nowadays, nowadays I'm quite happy with the situation because to operate in the framework, in the same framework like the private commercial gives us much more uh, possibilities and to work dynamic on the program than the colleagues in Germany got. So most is, um, important aspects in this case is that our colleagues in Germany are allowed only to broadcast in German language. Yeah? And to, uh, Okto wouldn't uh, ex exist in the way like it exists when we got the same rule. 
but because we got sometimes about more than 10 different languages in the program and we got a really high, uh, um, I would say, uh, at the um, uh, minorities in Vienna, a really high uh, credibility that they like Octo as the program which is sung by their community. And so it's the situation different because even Alex in Berlin uh, they got no Turkish spoken program from all uh, the districts and neighborhoods where, where they have got a lot of Turkish communities and so it's totally different. And so in the meantime I would say when I'm getting older I'm quite okay with the situation in Austria to have the same legal framework like the commercials one which gives us more possibilities.